Meanwhile, residents living in Umbilo in Durban, they've taken charge of their personal safety and goods. They say that's one of the lessons in the aftermath of what happened last year. The community policing forum in that area has been revitalized. Community members say they were forced to take to the streets to protect themselves from the criminality linked to the looting. Newsroom Africa's Zyanda Ngobo there for us. Zyanda, good afternoon to you. Still, what happened last year seems to hang strongly over that community. Absolutely, but I suppose there's some bittersweet takeaways from the unrest last year. And residents in this area are not taking chances, given the fact that there is still uh, murmurings and, 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 and bubbling under that um, we could be facing uh, further unrest, especially since the conditions that created the environment then for that unrest have actually worsened. And Calvin Thomas from the CPF in the area, you were just telling me of air how you're working very well with the police station that we're standing in front of. I mean, take us back to what it was like around this time last year when you as residents had to take your personal security into your own hands. Thanks, Zienda. Um, last year around this time, we woke to the looting, mayhem and destruction that was taking place throughout KZN. We saw shops being burnt, looted, lives being lost. SAPs overwhelmed with the amount of activity that was happening at various spots sporadically and it was difficult to control. As a community, we rallied together to assist them in their operations and provide support as backup to them when they went in the front lines defending uh, the, the, the property. And so a year later, you've now organized yourself to the extent that you, you have a WhatsApp group where you share information about any suspicious activity. Tell me how exactly that's going for you. And, you know, is there a specific authority that you're placing? Is it on the private security companies? Is it on SAPs? How is that operating? So we're working well with the station commander, Colonel Munsami. And what we've done is that we've now uh, got the CPF structure in place, whereas previously we didn't have uh, sector one, two, and three being fully operational. As the incoming chair, I've been able to get the, those sub forums in place, and they're working well. They've got their own patrol groups. We've now also linked up with SAP to work on the community patrollers in blue, which is an initiative from SAPS. Under the CPF structure and community in blue, we're doing away with vigilantism, which we saw a lot happening last year. So we're working within the confines of the law, and all our members have subscribed to, to working like that and working under the law, and uh, we, not, uh, we will not tolerate any vigilantism. What is the risk right now from your assessments in this area of the possibility of a resurgence of what we saw last year? Uh, look, at this point, it's, it's unclear, but there's always a threat that anything could flare up at any given time. So what we've done as, as a group, we've created a SAPS operational working group with all the colonels and, station, and the station commander. We've roped in private security companies. We've got our patrollers group that are working uh, also on that. So if there's anything that's happening, there's real-time information goes out to all three sectors, and if any of our patrollers are out or any of the SAP members in terms of crime prevention or the SAP members who are on operational duty, they respond to issues that are raised. So if something does flare up, we do have a network, and we've got the community that's out there, that's our eyes and ears. Apart from that operational group, we've got road groups where if anything's happened they post to to us and then we relay that information to that operational group so that we get uh, saps and security and our patrollers out in force sounds like uh, this community has its security and safety firmly under control Stephen Curtis so I suppose the lessons then that uh, came from last year's unrest have been learnt by this community you would have heard then Calvin Thomas there speaking about uh, the networks that they've now established and that that's a critical point here, Stephen, about community policing forums. I think that's something that's even emerged with all these tavern shootings and all the incidents of, uh, of security and shootings taking place across the country, that community policing forums and communication between the community and law enforcement authorities needs to be constant in order to be able to preempt any eventualities, Stephen. Zyanda and Global, thanks very much indeed. I do appreciate it. All right.